Hello everybody, my name is Kai Wehner and I work as Technology Evangelist for TIPCO Software. Today I want to talk a little bit about how to apply machine learning to real-time processing. And I will only show two slides and afterwards I want to show around 10 minutes of live demo. But what do I want to show you today is um, this closed loop for big data analytics, where first you have to understand historic data, for example stored in big data stores like Hadoop, and then you have to analyze and anticipate the information in this data set, and you can find new insights and patterns. And then you want to apply all these patterns to real-time processing to act on new events in real-time. For example, for fraud detection, cross-selling or predictive maintenance. And in all of this, in the meantime, you also can leverage machine learning technologies to build analytic models, which can help you a lot instead of programming everything explicitly. With machine learning, the computer can help you analyze the big data sets to find and apply insights. This is basically what I want to show you. And for that, in real world projects, we have three different kind of phases and also different kind of users. So one part is the business user, which uses visual analytics to um, take a first look at data, to ask questions and find some first insights. In addition, you often work together as business user with a data scientist for more advanced analytics to do predictions and optimizations, which are not that simple. This is often complex mathematics and statistics and machine learning models. So here really a data scientist needs to help you um, and also do some coding often. And after you have found your model where the business user and the data scientist work together, you have to deploy that analytic model to real-time processing afterwards. Because um, it only helps if, if you find insights and then you can have to also apply them to future events to act proactively. Otherwise, it doesn't help much if you just find the events or insights in historical data but cannot apply that to future events. And therefore, these are the three steps. And I want to now show you how in typical projects you realize that. The first part is the visual analytics tool like TEPCO Spotfire, where the business user can visually analyze data. It's very interactive and also so-called brush-linked. If you click on one part of the, of the visual uh, dashboards, also the other parts change and update with that information. And with that, a business user can already find a lot of information and get insights out of the complex and big data sets. However, as I told you, often um, he needs to leverage the data scientist to realize additional machine learning stuff. For that, the data scientist often uses other technologies like R or Spark or H2O or many others. In this simple example, which I want to show you here, we have some kind of input data, um, which I can show you here. In the end, this is customer data. And in this customer data, there is a churn attribute. So this shows which of these customers and this is all historical data churned and which did not churn and went to, to a competitor and this is the historical data and based on that um, the data scientists wants to apply this to new data and the new data does not have a churn attribute yet of course because it's still existing customers and we want to find out which of these customers will probably also a churn so that we can proactively um, do something like send him coupons or any other kind of, of, of stuff so that we keep him as customer. And for that you can uh, develop many kinds of, of analytic models and um, the good thing is that it's often a black box so there are many implemented different um, algorithms like the GLM or um, for, uh, random forest, um, so there's clustering, there's so many existing implementations of analytic models which you can then apply to your data like we did here and then you can get um, a new variable, in this case it's the churn probability and this tells you for every customer which is still an existing customer if you will probably churn or not and it shows with a specific probability like 10% 90% or 100% churn. And then you can apply this analytic model which you create here to new data. 
but uh, let's keep here first with the analytics part and with finding the analytics. So um, the developer um, uses or develops here an analytic model and after he has built the model, then um, we can use the model. Now in this case, um, I can show you how a data scientist exports that. In this case, I have an R model and I can simply see it here. It, the model is called fit and if we execute it, uh, sorry, execute it this way. This is some kind of analytic model which does something. We do not know what it does um, as business user, but we can apply this analytic model. And this is the same in Spotfire then, or in, in a wish, good visual analytics tool, where the business user cannot just use visualization dashboards, but he can also apply machine learning with many different technologies. In this case, I talk a lot about R, but it's the same for other um, machine learning frameworks like um, Spark or like H2O or many others. And the good thing about visual analytics tools um, here in Spotfire, you can do a lot of things out of the box without any help of the data scientist. So, for example, you can configure things like k-means clustering, which is again another machine learning algorithm, but it's um, supported here out of the box. So you just configure here what you want to do. So you say you want to cluster with, for example, nine different clusters, and you also have to um, choose your data set, of course, and then you can create such a clustering without any help of the data scientist. But um, on the other side, so this is one example of clustering here. And um, on the other side, there is often a scenario where some simple and smart data analytics is fine for some more simple use cases, but often you need the help of a data scientist to realize more complex scenarios. And there you simply need the help of an expert. And then you can also apply an analytic model which was developed by the data scientist. In this example of clustering, it was not done just by the visual tool, but here we integrated an R script. So let's take a look here at an example. So here you see um, a very simple script, but here you can see the same which I showed you in the R Studio. Here um, you just leverage a k-means algorithm in the background. So, and even if the business user has no idea what's going on in the background, he can play around here in the business UI with the visual analytics tool. So, for example, you can build here a cluster of seven um, um, cluster elements here, or you can go back to four, and you can play around until you have found your insights to apply them later in your use case. And here the R model is running in the background without any knowledge of the business user. And this is how the business user and the data scientist can work together to find insights and build analytic models. And then after you have found these insights, the key then is really to deploy these analytic models to real-time processing. And this is then the second part. For that, um, in this case, we use streaming analytics and the tool Tipco Streambase, which allows real-time processing of uh, new events, again for cross-selling, uh, fraud detection, predictive maintenance, and so on. And here you can also apply machine learning models. And that's what I want to focus here on. In this um, use case, you see it's a lot going on here, like filtering and mappings and a few transformations in this visual coding tool. And then there is one component which I want to focus on. It's the run H2O model. So there are these kind of connectors for H2O, for R, for Spark, for the PMML standard and other technologies. Now that you can simply apply uh, an analytic model. In this case, we simply apply a random forest um, H2O file. So we do not have to redevelop this. And it's the same what is true for R or Spark or so on. The data scientist and business user create an analytic model. And without redeveloping, you deploy the same model to the real-time time event processing part. And I want to show you now how this runs. I have already started the application and here I can use a great feature, a simulator, um, which I want to use here. So um, let's save the changes and now run it. 
and um, let's run it a little bit faster. And this is sending new events to this. And for every new event, we do the filtering and processing it. Also, then we apply the uh, machine learning model for every single event. And in this scenario, it was an Internet of Things use case with many sensors and events. So it's really about thousands or even millions of events. Therefore, we choose H2O in this use case because it is very fast and executes quickly, uh, even if you use, you use the analytic model here. If you use that, I want to prefer the live data mode, which shows this visually. So here you see all the events happening in real time. And um, this is really not just a monitoring tool, but you can also act proactively here. So if you do not just want to automate something here, the business user can again do something like do a right click on something and whatever is configured, then you can, for example, stop something or send a mechanic or whatever you want to do in kind of actions. You can configure anything here. And here you see the machine learning model is applied and all here the threshold is configured that if it's over 0.5%, the score of the analytic model, then um, in this case you scrap the data, you throw it away. Um, this example is from a manufacturing process with, with um, an assembly line which produces parts. And here with every red one we decide to scrap it because the machine learning model is applied here to every single event. So the green ones are okay and the red ones are scrapped. And what's also very interesting is that um, here the performance is so high. And here you can see um, the, a lot of statistics, but you can also see um, how fast it executes. And here we really execute in milliseconds. So the complete process, including the transformation, the XML parsing and a lot of things going on, and applying the machine learning model takes only three or four milliseconds for every event. I also have a nice web UI where you can see that, so that's also possible for web browsers and mobile devices. Um, it's a similar logic behind that. And here again you can see um, the statistics here. So um, here, for example, the complete streaming analytics process for one new event takes, in this case, around 5, sec uh, five milliseconds on average. And the analytic model um, takes less than a millisecond here, so 0 0.58 in average. So that's really very fast real-time processing. And that also ends my demo. I wanted to show you how the business user and data scientists develop a new analytic model with any kind of technology like R or Spark or H2O or any other, and then deploy the same model without real-time without um, redeveloping to real-time processing. And that's the huge benefit of this complete story. And with that, thanks for watching and contact me for any kind of feedback or questions.